Hello, hello, hello. We're back. We're back. Finally, we skipped a week. <laughs> we did. It was a rough week last week. I know. It was a short week. Yeah. Holiday week. I figured we doubled up on some episodes, so it's fine. We did. Plus, it's the end of the school year, which is always chaos. I know. We have events that started this week. Chaos. Yep. Canceled events. Yeah, that too. And crazy. Weather. Yes. And our guests know this they just do. as much as we do. They can feel our pain. I know. And how do we know that they can feel our pain? They're partners in our crime. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, welcome to the show, Matt Gibb, Janet Bloom. Thank you guys for being here. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. So we're excited to have our Lake Orion DDA counterparts. And but you guys are pretty new to the job. So tell us a little bit about you and how long you've been with Lake Orion. Janet, you want me to go first? I will turn it over to Matt. Well, <laughs> I uh, was fortunate enough to move to our good community in the early 90s and realized that even though I've been here 30 years, it's like I've just moved in, very much an old heritage community. and uh, uh, But new to the job here at the DDA, but not to DDAs in general. I uh, have spent a long career in government and law and politics and I've overseen DDAs and Worked as the deputy executive in Oakland County for Elbrooks Patterson for a lot of years. And programs like Main Street, which you two are rock stars in the Main Street program <laughs> in Oxford. You. And I think we're going to be riding your trolley as to the big event uh, coming up. So uh, it's exciting. So I, I kind of oversaw that program, but it didn't mean I did anything. It was more of like <laughs> just making sure that all of the super talented people in the, in the program in the county went forward. So it's good. But just with the DDA here in Lake Orion for the last few months, a couple, three months now, um, not unfamiliar to Lake Orion, though. It was um, uh, long ago, and I would encourage everybody that listens to this great um, program that it all it takes is a volunteer, meaning uh, you just have to start somewhere to be, get involved in your community. So I actually volunteered to sit on the zoning board in Orion Township all those years ago when we moved out here, and that turned into being the chair, and it turned into getting on council, and it turned into being the supervisor. And it turned into Elbrooks Patterson saying, "Isn't it funny how hey, they just suck you in?" It's like just that? crazy, yeah. yeah it just kind of goes on. Leave. So, so it's uh, it's exciting to be back in a role in the community, even though I didn't go very far away. Nice, awesome. And how about you, Janet? Yeah. So for myself, um, I have worked at the uh, Northville Chamber, Novi Chamber, Farmington DDA, and uh, have really enjoyed just immersing myself in the communities and um, came here when Molly left in mid-December and my first time driving in, I was just like, this is fantastic. And I fell in love with it, fell in love with the people, which they, again, have been so warm and welcoming. Um, and uh, so it's been a joy to be a part of the Lake Orion DDA. And as Matt said, so for my title, assistant director, um, started that mid-March as well and uh, enjoying the ride. So would you say it's where living is a vacation? <laughs> oh, you just had to bring it up. So much so that I've already started looking at kayak purchase. Oh, okay, there um, go. Yeah, yeah. So I'm. It, it's rubbing off. Yeah. Um, I am maybe picking up a piece of artwork off of Facebook Marketplace that has a sailboat on a lake. So you know, it's a vibe. It's a vibe. <laughs> it's taking over. Um, and I'm just immersing myself in it, and it is fantastic. Yeah, yeah, I will say it was such an interesting conversation when we had Chris Barnett in about the history of that turn or the slogan yeah tagline the slogan, whatever yeah. you want to call it because i i don't know why i just figured he made that up yeah we totally it so much it's, it's on everything he owns and so he i has, thought for sure and he has to insert it in every conversation that he has so i just assumed he had a very strong tie to it but learning that it's been in the community for quite some time that was very interesting yeah really cool well we're yeah. so happy to have you guys as our counterparts mm -hmm. in lake Orion. Obviously, Oxford and Lake Orion have had this beautiful partnership now for almost three years with the trolley program and the Stronger Together. And I have to say, when Molly left, Kimberly and I are looking at each other like, OK, who are we going to get? Yeah. And we're so glad we got you guys. So it's been really, really great. And um, thank you for dealing with us throwing a ton of chaos at you both mm -hmm. um, coming into it. But we're about to host a big event together mm -hmm. next Friday, Ladies in the 80s. Ladies in the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> so we're very excited about that. It, it, it is still a little disappointing that it's not just the 80s. Well, it you didn't know, rhyme. Some of us grew up in the 80s as well. If you notice on the event. on the other side of the gender scale. So listen, <laughs> if you look on the event, it does specifically say all are welcome because we did not want to exclude anyone from the event. So you are most welcome to attend. You know what, though? That's a really, 
I'm glad you brought that up because we've been asked about this before. And what we always say is who is willing to come and shop? Not only go to the bars and the restaurants, but who is willing to shop with their girlfriends? And I don't know about you, but my husband hates to shop, Mm -hmm. especially with me. So (laughs) I just feel like that's why we target this audience of women. And let me tell you, the guys don't hold back. They show up at the bars too. So ladies in the 80s, guys meet us at the bar at nine, right? And guys guys are welcome to come too as long as you're dressed up. (laughs) No. <laughs> That's right. As long as you wear one of the fanny packs yes. that we're going to be passing out. <laughs> so excited about this. We ordered the fanny packs today. So we'll, we'll have them ready for yeah. you guys too. So yeah. much excitement around that, especially with the merchants as well, right? Because oh, they're looking yeah. to fill the fanny packs with great stuff. Yes. So, um, yeah, first 50 people that check in in Oxford and also in, in downtown Lake Orion. And um, I think everybody's going to be, you know, just reminiscing back when they used to put those on. That'll be a fun time. So funny. Um, So let's talk a minute about our partnership, shall we? Absolutely. Okay. So we have events. Do you want to talk a little bit about, you know, both of you coming in? From what we're told, this is kind of a unique situation of having two communities that are so close partnering in such a way that we do. From your backgrounds, what would you say? Is this unique? Are you excited about this? Tell well, us your I mean, the, the first thing I would say is it's you already brought up that we're we're where living is a vacation and you're a gravel capital. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's just it's interesting how we've actually built this partnership. It's like opposites attract. Right. Yeah. It's um, like any relationship. Well, like right? any relationship. <laughs> yeah, it, it's good. You know, Oxford has always been um, this unbelievable um, extension and family member of Orion and vice versa, really. And, and the history of it all and the fact that the Pollyann Trail really is. Uh, the O is for Oxford in there. I mean, that's the Pontiac Oxford Northern mm-hmm. uh, rail line that ran. And so, you know, we've always been partners since the the heyday in the beginning. Um, but it's really cool to, like, watch it from afar, what you two have done, what Molly did before us, to really foster this relationship that's beyond just um, a banner or a sign mm-hmm. of saying, oh, let's, you know, let's let's all hug each other together. Let's all do things together. Well, seeing it in practice has been really great. So kudos to both of you for for moving it. Well, thank yeah, you. Thank you. And so we are kicking off events this summer. We have a busy summer. What else is on the docket for the Lake Orion DDA? What are you guys working on? I even had to bring my cheat sheets with me. <laughs> That's good. I mean, lumber yard is the first thing that yes, comes to yes. my mind. So we yeah. definitely want to hear about that too. Yeah. So um, just real quick, uh, everybody loves the Jubilee that happens downtown. Yes. Um, do you happen to know how many years that that's been going on? I I will have to, to learn that. I know a long time, a long yeah. time that that's been part of the community, um, June 20th through the 23rd. And then Lake Orion American Summer. So restaurant week, the 24th through 30th. And we're, and we're partnering with you guys on that. On the pub crawl yes. on the 28th of June. So uh, Oxford and, and Lake Orion and... And again, what a great Friday night to be able to get out and, and check all those places out. So that'll be a lot of fun. Um, I know the one question that we got many, many weeks was, when are the fireworks? Yes. July 6th. Lake okay, Orion. good to know. Yes. So awesome. everybody put it on your calendar. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And um, then the Cops uh, and Kids Car Show, always a popular attraction, July 27th. And then to round it out for our summer is the Dragon on the Lake. And um, so that's coming up on the August 22nd through the 25th. Um, I had a little bit of education in that. I was thinking that people had to actually build the boats. So, (laughs) no, they're actually brought in. See, yeah, the boss is laughing at me. Uh. Um, Yeah, so I, again, you come in and you just learn as fast as as you can, fire hose on full speed. Um, And uh, so I'm learning about that activity. Had a meeting with that yesterday. Um, so excited to see if we can get more teams as part of that. So that's going to be a definite push. Obviously, it's the Orient Art Center um, activity, but as a DDA, certainly want to support um, those activities that happen within our downtown. So, so for the uh, putting that out there to the group, hey, they're still looking to get more teams and and get um, those that are out yeah. there. I'm looking <laughs> at her going Oxford DDA team. <laughs> It, I feel like our board members would love that. So it, let's put this on the docket. Um, <laughs> it's happening. Yeah. It's She's happening. like, I'm laying down a challenge right yeah. now. Kimberly knows oh. that once something like sparks yes. my interest, it's happening one way or the other. And she gets on board or gets 
I just On get board. dragged it just, along. It, just <laughs> it, 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 it is one of the most fun things you'll ever do. You, you don't think it is? Yeah. I mean, a lot of people are like, what's a dragon boat? It's, well, it's a boat with a dragon head on it. Well, no, mm-hmm. it's a... It's a rather large canoe that 20 people paddle, and you two by two like and ten, crew, ten rows. Right? Yeah. Um, the teams that win aren't necessarily the strongest, although you'll see that. I think um, the the CrossFit Temple something from Oxford. Oh, we don't Build want to Temple. Build your yeah, Temple. Yeah, I, I, I one think last that's an year. Oxford business. It right? is. Admit that they've won in the past, <laughs> uh, but it's the coolest thing ever, and it's not a huge commitment. Um, most. Co- Boat uh, teams will use it as a fundraiser for things, yeah. and so okay. they fundraise for cancer, or they fundraise for a local community, or they fundraise for a victim, or they fundraise yeah. for whatever, and uh, and good things. And then you you show up on Saturday and you practice. Those that have never done it before are like, "What have I gotten myself into?" Mm-hmm. And then they finish practicing. And they're like, "Can we do it fifty more times?" Oh wow! Awesome. Um, it is a little strenuous because it's an official course, so it's not like just riding a boat around. Um, but it's so fun. The crew comes in from Toronto, the Great White North Dragon Boat Company. They bring the boats. Um, Orion actually has its own boat. Uh, so I didn't know. Crew so does the DDA boat. have a team? Well, we've never been formally challenged. Uh, oh, so, uh, <laughs> oh it's so mad. mad. Uh, have you learned know. nothing today? <laughs> you know, it's, I don't know. It's a, but it's 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 really cool and. I know that, that it, it is fun that uh, there's student teams now that have gotten on board. Oh, cool. Oxford High School has a team in Orion, and they kind of compete against yeah. each other. So, Kelly, you know, it would be pretty smart for us just to put our boards and our volunteers into the boats. I'm just going to say it right now. Oxford it. DDA challenges Lake Orion DDA oh. Dragon on the Lake 2024. <laughs> I'm just going to throw it out there. It's done. Oh, it's done. So it's okay, moving 20, on. Yeah, so it's 20 people <laughs> per boat. <laughs> Done. And uh, I did learn that they're 40 feet long. Okay. So okay. And how long impressive. is the course? Yeah, I am not sure so the, the, on that. So the course is just over 300 yards, about okay. 320 meters uh, okay. long. Uh, um, it's a competition course. Okay. Uh, there is um, an aspect of dragon boat racing is um, uh, generally affiliated with breast cancer uh, okay. support. And so they'll... Um, usually be two or three teams that are full breast cancer survivor teams. Okay, and so awesome. the whole experience is super cool. Yeah. So um, you paddle out uh, the whole key to it. I'll give your team a little secret. Oh, oh. thank you. It's and all, all of our listeners. It's <laughs> all about the the, the being in sync. And okay. So if your team can paddle together, you're going to do a lot better than how strong you are. Okay. And if you can paddle together and you're strong, then it's it's like your boat comes out of the water. It's so much okay. fun. Yeah. I really hope that our board chair, Pete, is listening right now. I know. <laughs> Pete, Wendy, Here it's we go. gonna be great. Here we go. It's gonna Here be go. great. Okay, one other thing. What about your concerts? Do you guys yes. have concerts yeah, this summer? Yeah, yeah. Okay. absolutely. So um, we just kind of package that up with our weekly activities that happen okay. through the summer months, and that starts on July 10th. Um, it's our LO Live Concert Series in Children's Park. Um, and that runs on Wednesdays, 6.30 to 8 p.m. So okay. certainly can go back to our, our website to get information. But what I love is that this downtown is so active. So there's Euchre Nights. There's um, uh, DJs, live music. There is um, Cornhole. Cornhole. Oh, can't forget about teams. Cornhole. The no- another thing Kelly has challenged um, Lake <laughs> True. Orion to. True. Yeah, that's that's coming to fruition, ladies. <laughs> just just yes. so everyone's clear on who the instigator is yes. here, in case there was any question. Yes. <laughs> um, trivia nights. And one thing that I love, social knitting, right? So, I mean. The social it, knitting? Yes. Oh. Heritage and spinning uh, and that's weaving fun. in downtown. They find a location in downtown, and they're like, bring your gear. We all sit together, and you do work on That's your different projects really cool. together. I had no idea that was a I, thing. Yeah. That's so neat. That's really cool. Yes, yeah. So, again, a lot of great things to just, you know, whatever you'd like to do. you got the free libraries down there. We've got the walking history tour. Mm-hmm. Look for the signs. Go on the QR code. Learn about the history and the buildings in downtown. What's the, the little book thing that you were working with the library on yesterday? Wow, thank you for uh, queuing that up for me. So uh, with the library and the DDA, we have the storybook stroll. And so those actually just got into the windows yesterday. So we have a great story that's on tap. Uh, You can actually pull up the map. And again, you can find it on our website, um, QR code on there. And what you do is that you read a full story. So grab your kids, start off at, at map, you know, spot number one, and you go to each location and you end up actually reading a full children's book. 
by the end and you get a chance to walk through our downtown. Very cool. That's so Is cool. it the same book all summer or will they swap out the different titles of the book? So we'll have one for the month of June. Okay. We'll have one for the month of July. So yeah. That's so great. we'll we'll yeah. So you That's got a little great. time. Yeah. Um but yeah, so we'll work on keeping that fresh during the summer. That's so great. cool. I love that. And Matt Tell us about the Lumberyard Project. Where does that sit right well, now? Well, before we get into the, the quick insanity that is the Lumberyard Project, uh, just back on the music is I really think that our communities could could be a little mini Nashville or a little mini Memphis because we've got so much music, not just in your concert series yeah. and ours, but there's there's great musicians that play at Gravcap. Just like there's, I listened to this awesome musician the other night at Oat Soda. Mm. Um, for the 80s night, I know Johnny Blacks is bringing in people to play 80s. We've got this great music culture. And 20 Front, so, 20 Front Street. Tw- yeah, 20 yeah, Front, yeah, yeah, that's a great yeah. venue. Our, our acts are booked through 20 Front Street, so yeah. they're actually um, not your typical gazebo yeah. acts. They're like really, truly up and coming, yeah. um, very very well-heeled stage acts. It's very cool. So on the lumberyard. Yeah. No, know. I'm with you. And I love the fact that you guys are Wednesday. We're Thursday. So we don't compete in that space. But we have something almost every night between the two communities. And the music part of it is huge. And I love that we put so much time in it as communities bringing in those bigger acts. Because I think that that's a game changer. You don't find that a lot with downtowns. They bring in... Just tiny little acts, you know, here and there and have like 20 people. But we really do draw in a crowd um, in both of our communities. Yeah, it's, it's it's a legitimately awesome thing that uh, that we should brag about. But Lumberyard? Yeah, All I right. got to know. So, uh, you know, things things are going to start progressing pretty quickly. Uh, uh, there's been a lot of concern. They saw the big sign come down. The Starry Night um, wood sign that was attached to one of the buildings came down. And you would have thought that there was a tornado that came through. <laughs> Lake Orient. So we've saved all of that. It's going to be reincorporated into the site um, through the urging of the National Main Street Program and our own local Oakland County Main Street Program that we're also close with. Uh, We are going to take on a historic preservation aspect that's a little bit bigger than we thought. So we're going to save the big barn. We're going to turn that into a venue. Um, The architects were out the other day that say that, you know, there's more here that you could repurpose into farmer's market instead of building new. So we're really aggressively looking at that. Uh, the initial thing is just cleaning it up, um, yeah. getting it cleaned up. So the community will see that. You're going to see that we're going to add some temporary parking on the front end because it's so needed in the community. Um, and that's kind of what the purpose of the site is, is to offset some of those community needs. Uh, so, you know, the nutshell commentary is is, is you're going to see the, the what I call the back end of the site, the one you can't see from the road. And who wants to sit by the road anyway? You're going to see it become this really cool public space that looks like the old lumber yard. And so cool. right now the temporary moniker is the lumber yard at Paint Creek because the Paint Creek runs right on the north end of the site. And so you'll see that with open space and food truck areas and trees with shade and all kinds of cool things. And on the front, we're kind of quietly working to try to recreate the essence. That was the old ice house. And so um, everybody, even Oxford, back in the 20s, 30s, 40s, would get their ice um, from Lake Orion or from Long Lake, which is the lake you can see standing yeah. on the deck yeah. at uh, Buffalo awesome. Wild Wings. Yeah. All that ice had to be stored someplace. It was stored right where the Lumberyard site is, um, is one of the main ice houses. So if we can build something that would be kind of a mixed use, more modern development, but looks super old and cool, that's what we're going to go for. Yeah. So, so you'll see all of that. It'll start going, dirt will start pushing, and buildings will start coming down. And Unfortunately, Janet, our phones will blow up like we're we're de- <laughs> mm-hmm. we're destroying the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really, we're not because we're going to preserve the main cool structures that we can there. So it's yeah. uh, it's exciting. But as you know, as you guys developed such beautiful uh, public space already in Oxford, it's a big lift, right? It and, is. Uh, it is. Know, keeping, and a lot of moving pieces. Yeah, and keeping everybody kind of on track with the mm-hmm. knowledge of it all of what's yep. happening. And so, um, what is your anticipated? I realize it's just a ballpark figure, but re- anticipated timing. So the, the goal of us, our DDA, would be is that we would have um, uh, people in the lumber yard uh, by this time next year. Okay. Oh, wow. Uh, that's right. awesome. That's the goal. And, right. And the reason that is a maybe goal uh, is because the development of that public space, it is going to be a big Eastern Market-like pavilion building. Mm-hmm. So we could build that in a year and we could have people in it. The front of the property is going to take a little longer. Yeah. So you'll see the, the, the public space in the back that... Uh, we were looking at pictures mm-hmm. just yesterday about these cool, um, already retrofitted 1950s s trailers into bourbon bars and mm-hmm. pastry. 
I mean, yeah. we're just envisioning those types of assets back there. So those things, hopefully, knock on wood, by this time next year will be gotcha. will be feet on the on the, on the lumber yard by then. The whole site probably take a couple of years, a couple yeah. three years before it's done. Okay. That's still really quick. Yeah. I mean, just our public spaces when you're dealing with different companies and construction and things like that, it's so easy to get behind. Mm-hmm. So we feel your pain that is coming. Yeah. <laughs> So what would you say, obviously the lumber yard, but um, what are some other strategic initiatives that you two have kind of identified over the next year for Lake Orion? Well, I think one of the things that we have recently moved to is that with the Main Street program, we used to have, um, well, we still do, but we're doing it in a different format. So we have the um, four main street pillars and each of those had a committee with them so Mm -hmm. you'd have your design organization economic vitality and promotions and what we have done with us as a new team coming on with the dda is that um, we have brought those groups together those volunteers and so we've basically had it as a all committee summit meeting we've had a couple of those under our belt currently and that allows us to kind of um basically get real grassroots with the efforts that we want to move forward with. And so that's the focus that we're going to do from now until end of year and um, really work on what are the low hanging fruit, uh, economic vitality items that we can do. What are some of the long term, short term strategies that we need to get on the books um, and really kind of capture everybody's um, history, knowledge, suggestions, ideas, uh, and then add that into and help that um, just add that as one of the layers uh, as far as the direction that we need to go, obviously with the input from the board, our knowledge as far as um, what, you know, our work history and uh, knowledge of the area as well and um, being able to to move that forward. So that's exciting um, to be able to, I think it really freed up a lot of ideas. I think people felt like I don't have to just talk about this one topic. Mm-hmm. I have ideas that would cut across all committees. Yeah. So I think it really has kind of re-energized our volunteers um and in fact we had a dda booth at the flower fail uh flower fair um that um orient art center had recently and um being able to talk to the community we had three new volunteers that just in conversation uh working that booth that um people are are eager interested want to get engaged um we certainly open it up to others if they're interested certainly reach out to our office um but i think that's really something that's key and core uh, as we move forward and develop those things that we want to get accomplished. Right. So they would just contact your office if they're interested in participating? Absolutely. Okay. We welcome that. Yeah. Vo- I mean, volunteers are the lifeblood of any community, right? Mm-hmm. Amen I'm to sure, that. I'm sure yes. you, could, you could use a few more yourself, but I'm sure. <laughs> Always. Always. Uh, yeah. It, it, it's an interesting thing for our community, both of our communities. So in Lake Ryan, you know, we're a very historic community. Um, you know, I know the, the good supervisors always running around talking about, you know, who we are, um, I've done that for years too. A lot of us have done that for years, but really creating an identity from we're an aging Main Street. We're an aging DDA. Our DDA is very old, much older than you, yours. And so, um, how do you continue who you are? Like, if if you have have good people in your community that want to volunteer and they say, "Well, I'd like to see these things," then you say, "Well, how do we create that identity? How do we create that vision?" So, it sounds like from a outward, it's like, "Oh, you're not planning another party." Well, we are. I mean, we've got. You know, we've got all these things mm-hmm. happening with you and our, our initiatives, but the core of it is is to um, to help create what is our identity for the next generation of our community. And the identity is, well, where are people traveling from to come see us? Where are they leaving for to go get things we don't have? Mm-hmm. And so doing all of that work. But I, I have to admit to you, my number one goal and priority, last night at the Horseshoe League, because we have <laughs> – the oldest horseshoe club I love in that. Michigan. Yes. Um, it is, they announced last night that it was formed in 1962. So wow. it's the oldest horseshoe full club. We actually have three players that are national champions wow. of horseshoeing. Okay. Um, but I somehow pulled a muscle in my right calf um, growing horseshoes. If you can imagine. Um, a, <laughs> How is this going to affect you for cornhole? Uh, it's, it's, <laughs> or your rowing skills. My rowing skills. All of the competitions we have. So I just want to survive oh horseshoes. Um, I, okay. and that's all I want to do. That's my that's, goal. That's, that's I can your just goal. survive survival horseshoes. survival of the and, fittest and if, this summer. If you summer. ever, ever, anybody in your in your group, anybody, anybody listening, ever wants to be humiliated, 
Um, don't go play golf. Don't do other things. Come to the Lake Orion Horseshoe Club and play against a national champion horseshoe person. Oh, my gosh. Um, it's, it, it's instant humbling. It's like, oh, my gosh. I did not realize yeah. how hard this is. I really but, hope somebody got this on video. I, think, <laughs> I feel like these are good experiences for us as we continue to mature in life to have those moments where we are reminded of our opportunities, right? <laughs> Brings you back down, yeah. right? <laughs> right. Yes. Awesome. So, well, we have something exciting coming up tomorrow. Don't look we at do. me like you don't okay. know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> we do. We have I, our Main Street yeah, Awards we do. tomorrow night with yeah. Oakland County. Um, how many do you guys have going? Do you so, have quite a few? Yeah, we do. We um. Gosh, I want to say we are at... Oh, the number of people? The number of people. I We're at 13. It'll probably be 15. Yeah, by I was going right. to say Okay, so we'll have two that. good groups. Uh, yeah. Because we always, yeah. Oxford and Lake Orion kind of stick hang out. together and That's hang right. out. So right. we're excited to go. And yeah, are you guys wearing costumes? Did I hear this right? Well... So Janet, <laughs> we're we're very yes. blessed that our our board chair Debbie Burgess, um, uh, custom flooring. She's she's phenomenal. She's great. She brings so much we energy love Debbie. to yeah. us. She's yes. great. Um, and where does she live? Uh, um, oh, yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. sorry, yeah. Debbie. Earlier. Sorry, Debbie. We're the we the love gravel you. Pit. Uh, yeah, that's okay. That's okay. I, I understand. <laughs> For those that don't know, it's in Oxford, the beautiful community. Where living is not a vacation. <laughs> Here's the thing. Those gravel pits will be lakes one day. Oh, so living is yeah. coming. Yeah, our vacation, vacation is coming. A vacation is coming. Yes. Vacation is coming. It, it, it's just, you know, knowing the anticipation of losing yeah. at the Dragon on the Lake, Dragon Boat. That's festival. right. Okay. I mean, I totally it's it. hard you know, We're him. lashing it's out. Yeah. So on the costume question, Debbie um, really wants us to wear costumes. Mm -hmm. um, is she wearing a costume? We might. She is... Very likely to wear a okay. costume. Okay, it's back to um, the future. Back theme. to the future. Um, I know so, the Main Street so team will have costumes. We'll see. Some T of them. Time will tell. Okay. Uh -huh. Game time Get decision. It? Back yeah. to the future. Yeah. Time uh, will tell. So <laughs> just okay. really quick, for those that don't know, the Main Street group within Oakland County is hosting an event tomorrow night. Yes. It's an award ceremony for the downtown DDAs that participate in the Main Street 28 community organization. Yes. And so we as a DDA, each DDA is uh, able to submit a nomination for themselves or for somebody within their community for different awards. And so tomorrow the awards will be given out. So it's a time to celebrate all of the accomplishments that the communities have had over the last year and really just have some time to network and just have fun. I think it's going to be a blast. Yeah. Well, and, and the, the great thing for the public, it, they, I think they look at all of us, the four of us and those other Main Street communities as we're the the entertainers and the yeah. providers. But the Main Street program itself is one of the most important economic drivers of the whole county. And Oakland yeah. County still is in the top 10 of the wealthiest demographic counties and yeah. the most educated counties in, in America. And the Main Street program really, really supports that more than anybody knows. And so, you know, we never go out there and say what we do, but the drivers of finding the right kind of tenants to take spaces and tracking how we can get their employees and making sure their investment's good and providing grant resources, all these different things drive that economic vitality. It's, mm -hmm. as you said, Janet, one of the committees. Um, and so that Main Street program, which has been going, Brooks Patterson, former executive, started Main Street at the recommendation of some very good people. It's the only county-based program in the United States. And so we have our own identity as an area, and I like the fact that we're up for a joint award, which mm -hmm. I yeah, think is I think that's unbelievable. Awesome. I, I love it. And we kind of get to showcase that tomorrow because the CEO mm -hmm. of Main Street America is coming to town as the keynote for tomorrow night, and they chose our communities as one of the stops along the way. So Erin Barnes will be here tomorrow, and she's going to come take a ride on the trolley and to look at both of our communities, which is really great. So we got on our hands and knees today and scrubbed the we trolley. Did. <laughs> we did. We yeah. did. We did. So yeah. between, you know, filling out grants, planting flowers, and scrubbing the trolley today. <laughs> We've had the day. It's been a day. a day. So what would you say now coming in, we talked a little bit about the partnership. How do you first see the partnership between Lake Orion and Oxford moving forward now that you two are new in the role? Yeah, I think it's, um, again, just a continuation of, uh, you know, what we currently have on deck and looking for new opportunities. Mm -hmm. it, really, our two communities have, um, you know, welcomed this uh, 
this arrangement and uh, they love knowing that I can just jump on a trolley and I can hit two communities at once. Um, so I think for us, it's always looking for the fresh ideas. What's what's great that we can do and, and implement um, listening to our uh, our businesses, listening to the patrons that come in and, and are the ones that are spending the dollars in our downtowns. Right. So um, I think it's exciting. And, you know, again, I think we're, we have a lot of challenges that will be coming up. Um, and uh, ways that we can continue to engage. And I think the more that we look at, you know, how can we support our businesses and what are activities that we can do to make that happen um, will guide us as to um, what this what this continues to be. Yeah. Perfectly and we, said. Yeah. And we, we, we meet weekly. <laughs> <laughs> we meet weekly with our team yes. to see, you know, what are we doing? What do we want to do? How are things working? We're events beneficial for both communities and or is how do we something? support each other because yeah, exactly. that is something that I feel like the Main Street program talks about all the time is supporting your sister communities mm-hmm. and that has been I think the biggest thing for our two downtowns is lending support especially when needed for us it was when everything happened in 21 that the Lake Orion program kind of came alongside and walked with us. And then as Molly was transitioning out, needed us to walk alongside the Lake Orion program, we did that. So it's nice to be able to lean on each other and know that you're not in this alone. And I mean, share a drink when you're a DDA director because holy moly, we go through a lot, don't we? (laughs) It's it's going to be so nice when you hand us the championship trophy in the cornhole challenge. (laughs) Um, those are the types of really cordial things that we always see from okay. Oxford, how graciously you for lose sure. in competitions. And I cannot yeah. wait to play this back for you. <laughs> 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 she will have it cute up and ready it. to yes. go. <laughs> well, thank you guys for being yes. here today. Thank we you. will be excited to party with you tomorrow. <laughs> yep. Hopefully bringing home that joint Responsibly. award. Responsibly. Responsibly. Responsibly <laughs> party. Yes, thank you again, and we will... See you later. Yes, thank you. Sounds great. Thank you. So, do you want to talk about the new and exciting thing that we are adding to our summer concert series that we just found out about this week? Because I know you're so passionate about this. I am so passionate about it. So, this is something that I feel like we've been asked for for years is a theater program within our community. So, like Farmington Hills has a great one and Royal Oak. And I'm so excited that an Oxford grad has come back to start the Oxford Theater Production Program. Oxford Wildcat Professional Theater Company. Oh, I'm so glad you I know think. that. Okay. That's what it is. And yeah. so we met with Adam this week. He mm-hmm. was absolutely phenomenal. Fantastic. He's going to run some great programming within the community, but he really wanted to partner with us for concerts in the park. So as we brainstorm, like we always do, we thought, wouldn't it be fun to have improv before yes. our concerts in the park? Yes. Pull people out. We'll have a sign up where people can mm-hmm. sign up if they really want to do it. Yep. And that's going to start next week for our first concerts. It is. On so Thursday night. I talked to him today. And so the way that he's having it structured is that he's bringing a team. So he'll have his team and they will do kind of a watch and learn session so maybe 15, 20 minutes kind of show how this group works and how improv works. And then we have the sign up that kicked out today. So if you're interested, go on our Facebook page and it's available to sign up for. And then those individuals can come up and kind of insert themselves in this activity. And so it'll run for 30 minutes from 545 to 615 before the concerts each Thursday. And we'll take it, you know, each week and see how it goes. And we can mix it up over the course of the summer. But we are super excited about this. I'm so excited. And I'm just excited to have Adam in the community and just this program because for students and for parents who want to get back involved and things like that, it's just going to be amazing. It is. Um, For the high school um, theater productions, they'll always pull a couple of kids in from the elementary but this will give those students even more of an opportunity yeah. in our community to get involved younger. Yeah. And I think really grow the program then at the high school as well. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited for that partnership. Yeah. And with concerts in the park, we're doing tribute bands. We are. We have Cotton Candy back with Lolo. Mm-hmm. We have Sick Pizza back. Um, Oxford Bank is our main sponsor. Mm-hmm. We've got Oxford Bike Shop as yeah. our weekly sponsor next week. So that'll be nice. Yeah. Uh, Oxford Bank will be serving up popcorn. Mm -hmm. And then we did it a little different this year with having an actual like kids zone. 
because Steve Drew is coming in to do balloons again this year. And you know, I'm going to be tying right alongside (laughs) him. I got to work on my skills this week. But with that, you know, there's a lot of balloon sword fighting that goes on. Yes. So instead of knocking over speakers this year, we're going to have like a super cool kids section on the side. And that's good for people wanting to watch the concert as well, because historically they've all kind of been running right up in front of the performers. And so there's always kind of been the concern of actually accidentally running into yes. someone kind of just hanging out watching the show. So I think it's a great change for yeah. this year. And I think they'll have more space and it'll yeah. be really nice. So we're excited to kick it off next week. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be good. And then this week. Unfortunately, we had to cancel our line da- our first line dancing class yesterday. Our sweet instructor had yeah. 103 fever, yeah, but so. we'll reschedule that. Yeah, we'll get that sorted out. And then tonight, the car cruise got canceled, unfortunately, as well because, because of the weather. But we still do have wind down Wednesday. And then what are we doing? We don't have a w- Main Street tomorrow. Yeah. So then next week is the big week. We have our concerts kicking off. We have the ladies of the 80s next Friday. We'll have line dancing, wind down Wednesday, yeah. car show, the trolley's running. Oh my it's going to be great. It's going to be easy. Uh-huh. Easy okay. week. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go get our sleep. Okay. And we'll see this Absolutely. audience next week. That sounds good.